Hey, y'all, country man. Uh, what have I been doing? I've been prepping a little bit this month, not much. I took all my 40 pound box of cucumbers and I made me some uh, dill pickle slices with dill and cayenne pepper. They turned out good. Because they were the big cucumbers, they're kind of soggy in the middle, but the taste is that excellent. And then I made the other uh, 30 pounds into the spheres, and they turned out real good. I've got three, I wound up with three and a half gallons of pickle spheres. They're in the fridge. They taste good. They're soggy, but they taste good. So that was my first attempt at making... Uh, some people call them salt pickles or fermented pickles. Either way, whatever you want to call them, they were, they turned out good. Uh, if I could get me some regular, the little puke uh, pickles that, uh, kosher pickles, the little ones, uh, I'm going to try it again. I'd love to have a 40-pound box of them and, uh, and ferment them up. I've got my recipe down pretty much to where... I know what I'm doing, and uh, I'm out of pickling spots, but I'll be getting there. And I want to apologize. I've been arrogant. I've been foolish. Uh, all of the above. This video is not about me. I want to talk about my mama. Well, country man, you've talked about your mom before, you know. Well, let, let me talk to you more, a little bit more in depth. If my brothers and sisters even watch this video, I may get yelled at for not giving you the right date. I think my dad was born in 1909. I think my mama was born in 1912 or 1913. Maybe in 1911. But here's the deal. They went through the Great Depression as teenagers. Or mom did. Mom, mom went I turn my light over you can see me uh, mom went through as a teenager and she never talked about how bad it was <coughs> or anything back then but mom was 49 years old when she had me that was 1960 let's see we just come out of the Korean War which wasn't too bad here in the States Vietnam was about to start uh, my brother Larry was in the National Guard. He didn't see time overseas, but my other brother, he was uh, stationed in Germany and all over. My niece was actually born in Germany. When she turned 18, they had a uh, sent her a letter. If she wanted to become a German citizen, she uh, could be one if she wanted to. But uh, my mom, from the time I can remember all the way, we had a garden which was 200 foot long and a, or 200 100 yards long and no I'll take it back I'm gonna say a hundred foot long and probably 300 foot wide big garden and from 1968 up until from 1960 to 68, they wasn't nobody home except uh, me, one of my brothers, and one of my sisters. Well, they, my brother got married. My sister went to college. Me and mom's living in a four-bedroom house, and we still got a half-acre garden. And uh, black-eyed peas and green beans and squash and turnips and tomatoes and... Uh, I don't know how many dozen quart jars that mom had, but uh, out the back door we had a covered patio deal, and then you go up about 20 foot, hang a right, and you go into what we call the pump house. We had the pump there. We had the, uh, two big deep freezes there, and along two walls we had nothing but quart jars of uh, stuff canned up. Dad dipped rooster snuff, so the eight plum trees in the backyard. Mom cleaned those jars up, made uh, plum jelly, put the wax on top, let it set up, put the tin lid back on the rooster snuff jar, and we ate plum jelly all winter long. If you want something sweet, that's what you got. Now, Mom and I were living at home, 
My brother bought him a hill farm, and he had 90 head of whiteface Hereford. And a yearling cow up there, eight, 900 pounds, you know, they're dressing out uh, probably four. Mom would buy at least a half a beef, maybe a whole beef, and put it in the freezer. Have it uh, wrapped up the whole bit, put it in the freezer. Uh, we ate good all year long. I mean, chicken, if it was on sale, mom bought, bought a lot, but we had a lot of uh, uh, stews, hamburger, a whole, whole lot of hamburger. And uh, from the 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, 77, 78, 79, something like that, uh, mom would get up, cook me breakfast, and I'd get on the bus and everybody would laugh at me. Well, what did mom cook you for breakfast that everybody was laughing at you, country man? I had a big old hamburger, three quarters of an inch thick, with an egg over it, on a hamburger bun, wrapped in aluminum foil, and I ate that on the bus on the way to school. I caught the bus 7.30 every morning, and everybody yelled at me because, or laughed at me because that's what I was eating. And, uh, come to find out, my mom was smart. Uh, high protein. Low fat, get your brain working. Heck, I was drinking coffee when I was 13. Uh, hadn't let her down since. Where is my coffee cup? I left it in there. Um, I've already had a quart of coffee today. I didn't start drinking until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I'll probably be up till 3 o'clock in the morning. I'll get over it. May not make me another quart. But uh, back to my mom. She canned everything in our garden. She canned all the... Uh, uh, she, if she, uh, pressure canned pork, pressure canned, uh, beef, uh, most of it was in the freezer. We had, we would go up to Campbell, Missouri, which was about 60 miles away, and, uh, <coughs> come back with a pickup load of peaches. We're talking bushel baskets here, the old wooden bush, bushel baskets, and she can up peaches, and we'd have peaches on the shelves. We're, I'd say 100 quarts at least. You could put 10 bushel in the back of a pickup. I remember them being, the back of the pickup being full of peaches and uh, coming home, mom go to work on them things. Uh, I remember sitting on the back porch and uh, shelling black eyed peas. She, she canned some, she uh, froze them up. And uh, let's fast forward now to Let's see, 40, 50 years later, I'll be 56 in November, and nobody has a garden. You want me to kill a whole cow and put it in my freezer? Why? I can go to the grocery store and get it. Well, it's cheaper. I, got, uh, I had a guy tell me that it was cheaper to go buy a pork butt and uh, at 99 cents a pound than to raise it yourself. Well, yeah, it is, but how many hormones and stuff has been shoved in that thing? I'm not saying that uh, I'm not a tree hugger by no means, and I don't uh, uh, I don't I don't care about GMO. I mean, we all got to die sometime. But having the uh, products on your shelf. When the grocery store runs dry down here a mile and a half away and you don't have nothing in your house to eat, what are you going to do? If you don't know how to do a garden and you don't know how to uh, go out and get your own food or raise your own animals and stuff like that, it's going to get bad. I don't know if it, I, am I doom and gloom? Nope. Hope it never happens. I hope Jesus comes back, take me to heaven. I don't have to worry about anybody or anything. In the meantime, uh, what, what's it say on our money? Oh, in God we trust. Everybody else, I don't. Uh, if I be a good boy, God's going to take me to heaven. The rest of the time, i got to stay down here and fight my own battles. And uh, I turn it all over to him. He helps me out, but uh, it's the ones that don't believe in God that scare me. So what are we doing now as far as prepping? Is, is it a lifestyle? I mean, am I uh, uh, scared, psycho, 
uh, whatever. I ain't, I ain't scared of no man, but uh, psycho, it's according to who you ask. In the meantime, uh, I've got uh, canned pork, canned pinto beans, sauerkraut, uh, canned cabbage, uh, a lot of canned goods. I've got uh, six 18 packs of eggs. Here in the next day or two, I'm going to make me up some pickled eggs. I got my pickles in the fridge. Uh, I've got beans stored back. If you shut the door, don't turn off the water or the gas, I can live a month in my house. Is that is well, and you're, you're doing okay, country man. You're fine. No, I'm not. Uh, I got to do a lot better. But what I'm saying is what, what, what we call prepping nowadays is what my mama and my dad called everyday living. You got to be more uh, self-sustaining, self-sufficient. You can't uh, Domino's Pizza is not going to be around. For what I can, if I order two pizzas, which is too large, what I usually are do I can get three or four meals out of that but it cost me 30 bucks that's still uh, eight dollars a meal just for pizza if I took 30 bucks I can buy enough beans rice and flour to last me a month is it what I want to eat no uh, but uh, 99 cents a pound for pork or 59 cents a pound for chicken which is on sale this week uh, that's 25 pounds of chicken that I can can up or freeze. If the until the freezer goes out and they turn the electricity off, then I'm going to have to have a canning party overnight and can all that up. Either way, it's not going to go bad. Uh, I would love to go out to Nelson's Meat out here outside of Huntington and get me a half hog. I know how to call it, come home and cut it up. I know how to. Uh, uh, smoke it if I had a smoker, which I I want I want to get me one, barbecue, smoke it, whatever. Uh, salt pork I've made enough salt pork in my time to know how to do it. I've got my kosher salt and everything. Uh, don't have any nitrites, but you you do with it. We we'll do it without it if you had to. But what I'm saying now, you know, this is about what my mom taught me. What uh, I done growing up and. Uh, Mom didn't do it out of necessity. She done it out of frugality, which I'm doing it now the same way. Uh, I can go and be like everybody else and go to the store and get what's on sale and do whatever. Or I can buy it while it's on sale and put it up in case the store never does have it. I don't have to depend on anybody else. That is what I'm talking about. And I'm rambling. Uh, the UK just d done their... Uh, uh, exit out of the EU. Uh, stock market's down 200 points. Uh, silver's up 40 cents. Gold's up $25. And uh, you know, move along. There's, there, move along. There's nothing to see here. Uh, the uh, dry index. It's what we ship all around the world as far as dry goods is down like 30 percent in the past year look at the dry index if you look it up and you see that line it goes straight down so everything's coming to a screeching halt in the world not just america but you know move along there's nothing you see here and uh how's this going to affect me uh man at the end of a dead end street as long as my social security check comes in, I'll be okay. If it don't, I'll still be okay, but it's going to be a whole lot tougher on me. I'm going to get a fishing pole, go over here to the river, and uh, catch my fish. And uh, i got to finish rebuilding my rabbit boxes here. I've got three or four dozen snares. Got enough to make three or four more dozen. Uh, I don't know how many people in uh, my neck of the woods know how to uh, 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 trap. So I'm hoping that uh, 
I can get to the animals before they do. Am I physically able to get out and do it? No. I got a couple of people that would be willing to do it for me, and I'm hoping to get a job after the economy collapses as a cook. Uh, I can take just about any kind of food and make a meal out of it. It might not be what you want to eat, but I can do it. And I've been rambling for right at 20 minutes, but uh, just think about putting a little bit something back. Think about uh, what would happen if you went to the grocery store and the shelves were empty. Think about your soul. Uh, world comes to end. Jesus comes back. You go into heaven or hell. If you don't know, don't uh, believe in God. I'll pray for you anyway. You might want to pick up a Bible and just read it uh, as an instruction manual. See how it like uh, hits you. For now, just remember, if I can do it, anybody can. God bless, countryman out for now.